Are we getting going? Hey, now we're live. Awesome. Hello, everyone. See if somebody shows up. Oh well, people will start showing up when they show up. Hope you're having a good Saturday. Oh, I forgot to get the bowl. I need the bowl. Can't make guacamole without the bowl. I suppose you can, but it'll be a little bit of a mess. See somebody popped in, hey. Let's get the last couple of things I need. Another exciting day. How are you doing? Looks like that's Melly. Hope you guys are having fun over there. The weather has, is better than it has been. So, anyway, I might as well talk about this actual recipe the way that I do this actual recipe. Uh, so I'm making my guacamole. I love making it for people. I enjoy getting it out for people. It's very simple. It's just a few ingredients and especially based on my experience of going to the grocery store this last couple of weeks, all of this stuff is here. Hey, Monolee, glad to see you guys finally made one. Um, anytime I've been to the grocery store, all of the prepackaged stuff that lasts forever is gone. But the... Uh, the grocery end of things, all of the produce is just packed. So, I mean, like avocados are there, onions are there, garlic is there. I guess people just don't cook at home anymore. So, do I need beer? Actually, I've got a beer right here. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, by all means, make sure you've got your adult beverage of choice. So, um, the ingredients on this, if I had a fresh lime, I would use fresh lime. Otherwise, lime juice is a must-have for guacamole. Obviously, avocados. I like to, anymore, I like to get my avocados three days early, green, 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 hard, just so you can't even squeeze them, because then when you get them home, you know the chances are they're not going to be bruised. Yeah, uh, the avocados, if you've got to like go home, make something for a party that's that night, you want to get them like where they're brown, almost to black, and so you can like just squeeze a little bit and you feel them kind of depressed, but if they, if you know that you're going to be making it if you know a few days ahead, you need to go and buy as green as you can and then just let them sit on your counter for about three days and then they'll be down to this and then you know that you don't have to worry about just something soft getting bruised in the bin with all of the other ones. Because if these show up in there and they ripen in the bin and people are digging around trying to find the perfect one, these the ones that are left are going to get bruised unless you're really lucky. So let's see, yep, yeah, it's beer. Can you guys hear me just fine? I know I'm talking, and I know people are asking questions. But yeah, that's uh, the beer today that I'm drinking is Lost 40 Brewery from here in Arkansas. It's the uh, second rodeo. It's a nice lager. It's uh, a yummy beer made with Arkansas rice. But yeah, if uh, if you guys can't hear me, let me know. Or I'm guessing if you couldn't hear me, you'd already let me know as it is. If the music's too loud or it's not loud enough, let me know. So. Back to the avocados. Uh, get it as green as you can a few days early, so that way they can ripen on your own counter. If you know that you've got to go and get it that night, grab just nice and brown and... Okay, cool. Thank you for the comments on the audio, by the way. Brown and just kind of a little bit... It's like you want it a little bit firm, but you want to be able to squish them just a little bit. Then you know that they're going to be ripe enough that you can turn it into guacamole. So. I've got the lime juice you have to have, whether it's a fresh lime or not, uh, simply to keep your avocados from turning brown. Don't believe all the nonsense about saving the pit from the avocado that has no effect on anything. Uh, other things I use in mine, kosher salt. I use cilantro. I know some people hate cilantro. If you're one of those folks where cilantro tastes like soap, don't use the cilantro. I mean, that's one of the great things about guacamole 
you can make it the way you like it, and then you don't have to have the way, like everybody doesn't have to have the same thing. Oh, that light doesn't look well on that. I was about to turn that on for my surface here. Um, I like a little bit of chili powder in my guacamole. I like cumin in my guacamole. Actually, uh, this right here is kind of the flavor profile for a lot of my Mexican food. Uh, just a pinch of ground red pepper. I also throw in a couple of dashes of some sort of hot sauce, whether you're talking about Tapatillo or Cholula or any of the other Mexican-style hot sauces. I prefer to use fresh garlic and fresh onion, but if you don't have fresh garlic or fresh onion, there is no shame in using powdered onion or powdered garlic. You can use these just fine. And so... I'm going to go ahead and really quickly, because I only need a little bit of the onion, I'm going to go ahead and cap the onion and then get what I need from it. And I'll set the rest of it aside. So I see what I just did there is I just capped one side and then the other side. Go down lengthwise. And then I can peel off that outside. And that gets you to where you want to be. And you don't have to worry about all the mess with onions. So if I'm just going to use a little bit of minced onion for this, so I'm going to save a lot of that onion for later for some other stuff. What I do when I mince my onion is I'll take it and I'll score it around the round part. Let's get that back in there. So I can score it going around. So I'm not cutting all the way through. And so I've got these fine lines in there. And then you can just go right on through. And just to give you an idea of what I'm looking at. Not sure how well you can see this. You get those tiny, those nice little pieces of garlic. And if you want to get them smaller, you can just leave them there on the table and just mince them up that much smaller. Is part of the reason why some people like to use garlic powder instead is because they don't feel like they want to do all the knife stuff. So I am going to keep that aside. I'm going to keep that here on the cutting surface, though, because I need to deal with that onion when I get done. So, and if I miss somebody's comment, go ahead and just holler at me. You know, yeah, I, we cut onions. Um, onions like that are really good to cut just to be able to get that stuff ready to go. The next piece that I want to get prepped before we get to the rest of it is my garlic. I usually... For, I've got a couple good size avocados. This is a two or three cloves of garlic off of that bulb. And garlic is the easiest thing in the world to prep that too many people work way too hard. If you've got a decent chef's knife, put the garlic down on the surface, put the meat of put the meat of the blade like right about here where it's thickest, put it right down on top. And it's right there with the palm of your hand. And not only does that smash it a little bit, it also breaks most of it out of its husk. So I end up... So here's the husk in this hand, and there's garlic bolt in that, I mean the, the garlic, yeah, the cloves in that hand. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish peeling that one off, because that way it saves you the trouble of trying to get the husk off of the garlic. And again, if you're not really used to working in the kitchen, if you don't enjoy doing the knife work, if you don't enjoy doing all this stuff, there is absolutely no shame in using just plain uh, the powder, like the garlic powder or the onion powder for any of this stuff. I just really like to do that. 
because partially because I'm a nerd, partially just because I really enjoy the process of making this. And I also, as for those of you who've been around me when I've cooked, let's see here. In the garden. Okay, I see Mona Lee's comment. I saw Celia's. Yeah, you can get the pre-missed garlic. You can get the pre-missed onion. It's really easy to do. And like I said, there's no shame in doing it differently. But I always love showing this process to people, uh, especially when there's like this mystical thing about working in the kitchen. It's a lot easier than people think it is. But it's always hard. It's the first couple of times. And a lot of people who try to teach people kitchen stuff tend to be complete schmucks about it. And they talk like they're better than everybody else because I know how to do so and you don't kind of a thing. They make it seem like this magic and it's not. So now we're on to the regular part of making the guac. So I've got my, uh, I've got my uh, lime juice. I'm going to put just a little bit of lime juice, just about, it's probably about a teaspoon, two teaspoons in there into the bowl, or you can take like, if you have actual limes, take half a lime, squeeze that juice out, uh, half of the lime into your bowl. And then swirl it around. What I'm doing here is I'm coating the bowl to get the lime juice on there. The reason why this is important is the citric acid in the lime juice, it takes care of any of the uh, material, chemicals, the chemicals in the avocado that oxidize and then turn brown later on. So if you want your, your guacamole to stay green, you have to use the lime juice. You coat the bottom of the bowl. And the easy part of cutting the limes, put it down on a table, put that right through one end of it. I just roll it. There's a couple of ways you can go about doing that. You turn it and there you go. So I've got bisected, got the two halves, and then the big question, how do you get the seed out of the avocado? There's a couple different ways. This makes practice if you get with it. Take again, back to your knife. I'm going to take the knife. I'm going to watch very carefully. Let's see, I've just got that right into the nut. And I turn it, and it comes right out. So now I've got one done. I'm going to take my spoon. Get, empty that out. If you see brown flecks or not nasty down inside the avocado, that's not a big issue. I mean, it's just, you're, you can tell it's starting to move a little bit past what ripe is. But it's not going to, granted, like if I had a big black chunk inside my avocado, I might be concerned. But most of the time, it's not a bad problem because by the time this mash is all up together, it's still going to be green. So let's get my other one. And this is the other way I usually do it just because I've practiced so long I really am not afraid of cutting my hand off. Is I just sit there and I rotate the avocado along the knife edge. And again, take it, turn it, twist it and you're off. And again, take the knife, take it, turn it, and you're out. So how's everybody doing while well, I'm emptying this out? I don't know about you guys, but I'm starting to go stir crazy. Even though I have been going into work. It kind of sucks when you're the only person there in a big, big building. Which if you take a look at uh, socials tomorrow, <laughs> you'll see me making fun of that same subject. But I know I've been watching a number of you guys who have been trying to keep saying, trying to, people, people are really starting to get goofy on Facebook. People who have sworn off all kinds of quizzes are throwing quizzes out left and right. People who you never see posting on Facebook are posting on Facebook left and right. It's been kind of crazy. So, okay. I've got my avocados in the bowl. They're right there. I'm going to slide this back a little bit so you can see a little bit better right here. I'm going to take some of that onion that I cut earlier. And again, all this stuff is just to taste. Doing lots of zooms. Yeah, there's a lot of people doing lots of zooms. Um, and I think there's more that's going to come out. I don't know if you've heard any of the stuff about zoom bombers. Um, the biggest tip I can give to anybody who's using zoom is make sure your zoom meeting has a password. If you're that, if you don't have a password, people are going to come in and they'll do stupid stuff. 
if you don't, like if, even if you are in a password protected Zoom, uh, there are still people who are just hacking in just because they can, just for the kicks of it. Okay, so I just added my onion and I added my garlic in there. But yeah, it worked because we've got eight people who work at our museum. Okay, this is the chili powder. Um, I like a nice little coating of chili. I like a little bit of kick in mine. Uh, we've got eight people who work at our museum, and of them, I'm the only one who's going to the building because I work directly with collections, and without having the title, I'm also kind of acting as a facilities manager right now. I go in and make sure the building's not falling apart. So we have the... Uh, Okay, yeah, starting to do the passwords. You've got to do passwords. Uh, so everybody else, though, for the most part, is working at home with a couple of exceptions. So three times a week, we have uh, we touch base for 15, 20 minutes on Zoom just to touch, just to say hey and see what we're up to. Um, so ground cumin. And again, if you don't like some of this stuff, a little dash of ground red pepper. If you don't like this stuff, don't add it. If there's something you do like, um, I know tons of people who like tomato in their guacamole. I despise tomato in my guacamole. I'll eat it. It's just not what I want. Some cilantro. And really, a lot of this stuff is just complete eyeball. Um, about half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And now before I start kind of mashing this stuff up, I always like to do a little bit of Mexican hot sauce. Partially, and again, partially just for the flavor, partially, it's just, this is my, this is my flavor profile when I'm doing a lot of Mexican food. And I know there's a few people who are on this who have had my Mexican food. Uh, there's a few people who have had my guacamole. So this is really kind of, Nuts and bolts, this is where it's at. And as you're starting to mash it, you might want to add just a little bit more, a little bit more lime juice. Um, if you want to, uh, one of the things that some people do is they'll take stuff like this and they'll just take a potato masher to it or they'll throw it in a blender or they'll do all kinds of crazy stuff because they, they basically want to avocado mush. And I want a little bit of chunk to it. Uh, there's times I'll take a fork to it. Um, I might take a pastry blender sometimes initially just to get the bigger pieces broken up. But for the most part, it's just kind of go work at it. And as you smash it, you'll see the bigger pieces that you can then. So besides just kind of using my spoon down chopping through, I'm also kind of taking it and just smearing the bigger pieces up against the bowl just to kind of break those up a little bit. But um, all in all, I mean, this is one of the simplest things you can do, and I know a lot of people are getting stuck at home, and they're having to plan meals out several days in advance for the first time ever. And there we go. Um, hey, Steve, how are you doing? Yeah, I saw Steve had popped in earlier. This is how much I love you guys. My dad just tried calling. So, uh, I will call him back as soon as I get off of all of this today. So, let's see where that's at. I'm going to pull down my bag of chips. And this is the key part of any guacamole making experience. You gotta do the taste test. Don't just like stick your finger in the bowl. You gotta use a chip because this is what people are eating it with. This is a pretty good flavor. Um, I can't think of much else. I might put a little bit more chili powder in there just because that's kind of my thing. But, um, that's guacamole. I mean, you're done. You can take this, stick it in the fridge. If you're going to throw it in and use it later, put some saran wrap or similar down on top of it in contact with it to get as much oxygen away from it as you can. That's the whole idea behind the lime juice. 
is to stop the uh, oxidizing of any of the chemicals. And then, oh, these are Santitas. I mean, just <laughs> everybody's got chips. Uh, I don't know what kind of chips. Uh, you can get whatever we want. Uh, just any sort of taco chips. There's times I'll have carrot chips, uh, just like like regular like carrot slices that they sell now as chips. Um, but uh, you can do any kind of chips you want for this stuff. Everybody's got. I know some people who are just corn chips and unsalted corn chips and whatever corn chips or blue tortilla or I mean just blue corn tortilla or just anything like that. Just take what you want, enjoy what you want, and I mean this is the one of the ultimate. Make it the way you like it. If you don't like it with that much salt, don't put that much salt in it. And just each time you do it, just kind of keep track. Uh, I do like guacamole on my tacos. Uh, we usually, if we have guacamole in the house, like if we'll make, uh, we'll usually make uh, either chicken or beef tacos uh, sometime like once a week, maybe, maybe more. And if we have guacamole in the house, we'll usually smear a little bit of guacamole, put a little dollop of brown be of uh, refried beans, Maybe a little bit of uh, Spanish rice. Uh, for the Spanish rice, our favorite is Zatarans. If you can get hold of the Zatarán Spanish rice, that's our personal preference. But we'll take uh, that and then toss on wherever the protein is, then toss on whatever. Hey, Greg, what's going on? Um, we are, I mean, it's just one of those things that any way that you like to do stuff, there is no right way. Everybody's got their own taste buds. Everybody has their own feel. And if nothing else, this is a wonderful way to figure out whether or not you've got coronavirus. Because if you can't taste this, you've got coronavirus. So, anyway. With that said. Yeah, it's... This whole thing is... Um, this is one of a number of things. Unlike, if you look at the last two live videos I did... Those very specifically, you need a recipe to do what you're doing. With this, this is make up what you want. If you've got more avocado, then just add some more stuff. You saw I have absolutely no care when it comes to measuring out my stuff. It's just shaking in and then taste it. Shake in some more. Taste it. If you shake in too much, then, well, you're kind of out of luck. You just have to deal with it that time, but then you get an idea. And with a lot of this, it's like any other cooking. You get used to it. You get to try it. You get better at it, and with more practice, it becomes second nature. Um, there was a friend of mine uh, who, some of you guys know James, um, in Phoenix. Uh, he commented earlier, this is one of the only things he knows how to make without the recipe. And this is one of those things you, this is one of the simplest things you can ever make in the kitchen. Other than just like throwing an egg in a bowl of hot water. I mean, it's just... There's not a whole lot of there's not a whole lot of problems making any of this, but um, the key thing though, and again the reason main reason why I'm doing this is as much as I like to show people stuff, and as much as I want people to, especially now, with a lot of people really finding out that they don't know how to do a lot of this stuff, is I am here, probably primarily for what I'm seeing scroll down the side of my thing, seeing all my friends popping in, seeing all my friends saying hey. Uh, I'm enjoying watching everybody who's here, and this is part of my mental floss to get through all of this stuff. I'm, I've been, like I said, I've been going to work every day, but being the only person there in a big building kind of drives me nuts, especially when I'm as social as I am, and most of you who know me know how social I am, and that I like to be around other people and get a chance to say hey and maybe have an adult beverage before, and... So, very definitely, next time you make some guacamole, think of me. Um, other than that, I would love to answer any questions anybody has about any of the things I've talked about this evening, uh, or this afternoon. And in the meantime, I want to finish dicing up this onion while people's comments come in. Mm. That's some yummy guacamole. And I don't know if Steve ever heard this, Mona Lee, but um, at one point, Aaron and I, were, this is about the time at the height of Top Chef, Aaron and I were conspiring because I, we know that Steve's a little bit of a gourmet and we know that I'm a little bit of a kitchen nerd. We were talking about trying to set up a thing 
where we were going to do like a uh, museum top shelf where we were going to try and set up some sort of a thing with hot plates or similar. I don't know what exactly we we're going to do with it. We were looking at doing something where Steve and I and maybe somebody else, if we thought of it, could have a little cook-off against each other. Hey, how are you doing, man? Thanks for dropping in, Craig. But yeah, uh, I think a uh, Mountain Plains Museum uh, Top Chef would have been hilarious. Especially with the right person, right people uh, judging. I can picture uh, Brian Wisenhunt would have been a good judge for that. Um, couple, there's a number of people who could have been really good uh, really good hosts or MCs for such an event. Oh, it was, yeah, it was a good idea, but it just never got off the ground, I think partially because we realized that it just would have been a nightmare trying to produce something like that. I'll be right back. I just, uh, I just wanted to go grab the trash can for some of my stuff. And grab my Ziploc bag. Because now that I've got that, hey Dot, how are you doing? I haven't seen you in forever. I hope you and your sister are doing fabulously. But um, I think Dot's actually had this before. It's been a long time. Dot is a person who I worked with in Enid, Oklahoma at the Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center. She was museum assistant there, her and her sister. And they were both awesome people, and I loved working with them. And I, between them leaving the museum there and me leaving the museum there, I miss them. Something fierce. Hey, Dr. Bob. Most of y'all missed the uh, main part of the cooking. I mean, that's how fast making guacamole is, but uh, you can always go back and uh, watch it later. Uh, I just finished cleaning up that onion that I used for my guacamole, and it is just, just getting ready to put it right back down in the Ziploc so I can throw it in the freezer so we can throw it in the skillet for something later on. MPMA talent shows were fun. It was uh, a lot of fun. Uh, my favorite, though, was probably, uh, I think it was Fargo. We did MPMA Idol, uh, where we were all singing karaoke tunes. And we had Aaron, Jay, and uh, Kathy Dixon uh, were the judges. And that was awesome. That was, that was a whole great thing. Oh yeah, Dot. I'm glad I'm glad you popped in there. Now I'm glad to hear that you and your sister are doing well. Alright, there's that. There's that. Onion needs to go in there. And I'm just cleaning up my space right now because uh, I went through and did this. Oh! Fun little cheap kitchen trick. Uh, on this glass cook surface, uh, for those of you who do uh, plastic cutting boards, you know, they tend to slide around a lot on there. What I did is I took a dish towel, folded it over twice, laid it down on the surface, and now it doesn't slide around. Nice little, nice little trick. So, but, um, yeah, if you want the, kind of the recipe, you guys can go back and watch this later on to uh, catch the recipe behind this, but that's the main part of that. Um, other than that, um, how, I'm just hoping everybody is doing well and getting through all of this. I know, hey Keith, I know that different people in different parts of the world are dealing with different things. I know some of you are on lockdown. I know some of us, like here in Arkansas, uh, the locals are not taking it as seriously, so we are basically free to do whatever we want. Uh, there's a number of things that are not open, and it's primarily just businesses choosing not to be open. Uh, whereas I've got friends of mine, I've got a very good friend in 
New York City who has left his apartment three times in three weeks and each time just to go down to the grocery store and go back. And they just sit there and listen to sirens all day long. Uh, they've seen a number of the people in their apartment comp their apartment building uh, get carted out. Uh, it's There's a lot of people I wish would take this a bit more seriously than they do, but uh, unfortunately we are where we are. And I can just wish nothing but the best for all of you guys. I know that for the first for a few weeks there, I was doing nothing but trying to fact check everybody on what was happening and give projections on what was happening and why I was terrified. Uh, I still am terrified about what's going to continue to happen uh, as we keep going. But for a lot of what's going on, um, we can just do what we're doing and just try to make the best of it we can which is part of why I'm trying to do this, partially to help my own mental process and just get some socialization out with people, uh, even though it's mostly one-sided. Uh, but we're also trying to make sure the, uh, I just, I just want to help out people that, I mean, just somebody watching this video has never made guacamole before and hopefully now they'll take this and they will make guacamole and just have a good time and enjoy it. And, feel happy. That or if you watch my last couple of videos, uh, last weekend I made uh, baking powder biscuits. The uh, weekend before that I made, uh, I think I made pancakes. Yeah, I made pancakes the weekend before that. So as we just go, I'm just going to continue to think about other stuff to make, stuff that's easy and stuff that uh, we can talk to you guys about and hopefully carry on conversations. Um, yeah, Mona Lee, I have not I mean, like I've heard, I talked to Aaron uh, yesterday or the day before about what the situation is in Denver. And I mean, it's just, I I'm, this next few weeks are not going to be a fun few weeks for the country. But anyway, uh, yeah, and it's, and it's a choice on, and thank you, Monley. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, and it's one of those things that it's not just me reaching out. You guys chose to come here and listen and to watch and to engage. And that's, a good chunk of why I'm doing this. Uh, this is it's one of those things that I know people have joked about this. This is this is the time introverts have prepared for all their lives. And all of us extroverts are kind of going out of our heads trying to figure out what's going on and how to make things happen. Hey Blake, how are you doing, man? You missed the guacamole, dude. So but I know you probably have a beer in your hand. But uh, other than that, it's just uh, trying to keep an eye on myself and keep an eye on everybody else. And uh, it's one of those things I've told a bunch of people is talk to people. If you've got to get on, I know it helps a lot of us are getting on Zoom or like uh, Google View or whatever it is. Uh, I know some of my kids use for their school. But I mean, everybody I've run into they're in a lot better, lot better mental, a lot better mental place after they've gotten done talking to or viewing other people. Show people your face. Still stealing your recipe. I had this recipe before I knew you, dude. I'll let you. We can argue that one. But um, this is, uh, it's just one of those things that one of the biggest pieces of mental health I can give. Um, is just to talk to people, especially those people who lose folks. Uh, I know, yeah, five deaths in Garfield County. Uh, I was just about to mention that. There's, and I know Garfield County is small enough that you probably knew some of that, somebody. Uh, we're all going to start getting to the point where we know somebody. I don't know anybody directly, but you have a ton of people. I've got a kid I went to high school with in Arizona. He currently lives in Florida. His mom lived in New York City. She passed away this last week. And so I've been keeping in touch with him just to make sure because I know it's like to lose your mom. And But I was able to be there. And I know that he is in a whole different thing. And it's just talk to the people. Talk to those who are in places where you know that they may not be in the best frame of mind. Just holler at them. I mean, it's just... Just to, just to say, hey, they'll know somebody else is there and people are going to be happy. So, hey, Janelle. Hey, Fran. Um, 
I don't think Fran's seen this shirt before. So, um, for my Fran was uh, stationed with me at uh, Fort Bliss, Texas, all of uh, 24 years ago. Um, yeah, I know we're old. So, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy. But anyway, um, I think I'm going to sit down and eat some of this, and I'm going to finish drinking my beer. Uh, thank you to everybody for popping in. Uh, by all means, after this Facebook Live gets done, if you want to know how to make guacamole, or if you want to be like Blake and keep claiming that somebody stole his guacamole, which I didn't, uh, by all means, go ahead and grab it back and uh, go back through and uh, listen to it. Hey, no, no problem, Janelle. Uh, if anybody has suggestions, I know a good friend of mine, Kathy, uh, suggested I do strawberry shortcake. I don't like strawberry shortcake. I will eat strawberry shortcake. I'm not making it. Um, but yeah, if you've got something, I'm looking for stuff that's simple, stuff that people might have or might be able to get really easily from the store, especially like the great thing with this is avocados are at the grocery store. Fresh produce is at the grocery store. Everything else is gone. Fresh produce is there. Oh, let's see. Oh, Blake started to say something. Blake started to say something. I didn't see what it was. Anyway, um, oh, Fran doesn't like me outing how old we are. Uh, but uh, if there's something that you want to know how to make, especially if it's something you've, that you've had that I've made, uh, by all means, give a shout, and uh, I'll take into consideration stuff. But uh, I definitely want to uh, keep in touch. Like I said, show people your face. Get on Facebook Live with them. Get on, uh, what's the Apple one? This is, I don't do Apple. But, I mean, just get on something with people. Talk to them. I know we can't get in person, but this is your opportunity to get back into touch with folks who you miss. And do it now because there's, oh, crepes. Oh, dear Lord, no. I am not good enough for crepes. I would love to do crepes. I am not good enough for crepes. The, uh, I, I've got some ideas. I'm, I'm thinking actually ramen since I know that a ton of people have hoarded the little 30 cent ramen things. And I can show them how to make ramen the right way uh, with like all the stuff. But uh, that's a whole other story. But like, it takes you like five extra minutes. But uh, yeah, if there's something that you want me to make that uh, is simple that hoarders might have in their house right now, uh, I'll definitely look at it. But uh, say hey to people, keep in touch with people. Uh, a lot of you guys pop in today that means more to me than what you might think it does. Uh, very definitely though. Uh, take care, stay safe, be well, do the stuff you know you're supposed to. Thanks a lot for coming in. Bye-bye.